evening. Thank you all very much for being here for tonight's Advent Cafe, braving the, the cold. Um, it is that week of the year. Uh, joke to a couple of people. Um, when I got here, my car said that I should consider um, an engine heater. So when it, your car tells you that it's cold, then you know it's cold. So very pleased to have the Crabill Corral with us tonight. Thank you all for being here and for leading us in music. And also our guest preacher tonight is uh, Lindsay Wilton. So thank you, Lindsay. And we do have the continuation of the uh, Bible study after the service. So uh, help yourself to tea and coffee and uh, something to eat. And then those who would like to join us will go down to the lounge. I did turn the heat on, so I promise it will be warm down there too. So I will turn it back over to the Crabio Corral, and uh, I think standing as you are able, join us in our opening song. Come to us this night, O God. Come to us this Speak to us this night, O God. Speak to us your truth. Dwell with us this night, O God. Dwell with us in your mouth. O Christ, kindle in our hearts within a flame of love to our neighbor, to our foes, to our friends, to our kindred all. O Christ of the poor and the yearning, from the humblest thing that lives to the name that is highest of all, kindle in our hearts within a flame of love. Our reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Please be seated. St. George. 
St. George. Name sounds familiar, right? Since I did not know much about saints and did not know of a person through history that exemplified a life in faith, I went with the practical choice of the saint our church was named after. It is not certain just when or by what process the new church took the name of St. George's, but all references after 1835 bear this title. There is no record of this decision being made by the bishop or wardens or rector. It just seems to have happened. My hope is in the next few minutes you will agree with me that it was the perfect choice. When I mentioned to someone that I was doing my sermon on St. George, their response was, oh, the dragon slayer. I thought, oh great, what the heck did I get myself into? How do you go from someone being called a dragon slayer to a saint? So who was this man? Very little is actually known. It is said that he is one of the saints whose names are rightly reverenced among us, but whose actions are known only to God. What I can tell you is that it was believed he was born to a wealthy Christian noble family. While living in Palestine, he joined the Imperial Roman Army and rose in rank to an elite unit whose members served as personal bodyguards to the Roman Emperor. The Emperor of the day, who is understood to be the dragon of the story, had a self-image as the restorer of Rome to its past glory. Christians' legal rights were withdrawn Christian scriptures and places of worship across the empire were ordered to be destroyed. Christians were prohibited from assembling for worship. Christians were removed from the governing body and military by a law demanding the members of the court and entire army perform pagan sacrifices of animals or face being discharged. The persecution of all Christians was eventually proclaimed and to be carried out by the military. George objected to this and decided to resign his military post. George in turn was imprisoned and then tortured, but would not deny his faith to be released. Eventually he was beheaded on April 23rd, 303. Since little is actually known about George, I imagine he was not a man such as the disciples or other saints whose lives were devoted to doing amazing works. He was just a guy living his life and doing his job until he found the injustice in his world too much to bear and decided to do the only thing he could think of, stop working for the person that was carrying out the injustice regardless of the consequences. Just an ordinary man standing up for what he believed was right. He was extraordinarily steadfast in his faith and devotion to his beliefs. It is said the torture he endured was extreme, yet he did not waver. Right up to the moment he was killed, he stayed true to what he believed to be right, and I believe found great strength in knowing God was there with him. I believe he would have been well known by his military brothers, but also the Christian community he supported. His martyrdom showed to the people of his time and down through the ages as his story became that of the dragon slayer to stand up for what you know is right, that it is not an easy road to live out the teachings of the Bible and to live a Christian life, that God will be with you even through your hardest trials to give you strength to persevere, and that good will conquer evil. Tonight we heard a pretty specific and powerful message from Jesus. I'm guessing by the fact that this passage is found in three out of four gospel accounts that this really resonated with the people of his time. Today, what do we label as a burden to bear? A strange relationship, a thankless job, a physical illness. Today, how do we view the cross? A cherished symbol of atonement, forgiveness, grace, and love. But in Jesus' day, the cross represented nothing but torturous death. Because the Romans forced convicted criminals to carry their own crosses to the place of crucifixion, Bearing a cross meant carrying their own execution device while facing ridicule along the way to death. Taking up the cross to follow Jesus is no simple feat. People may face the loss of friends, family, reputation, career, 
and possibly even their life in some parts of the world. Three things are asked by Jesus. Not only of his disciples, but all that were there, and even of us today. Deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. To deny oneself does not mean giving up something of comfort such as at Lent. Another way to put this is to renounce your right to ourselves, turn over the right to run our own lives, and leave it in God's hands. Also reject self-interest and self-fulfillment, and diligently seek out how to fulfill the will of God. Have you put aside your own interests to do the will of God? Are there places in your life where you could step out of your comfort zone to do what Jesus would do? Clothe the naked, give to the needy, feed the hungry, bring comfort to those seeking it. I challenge us to embrace those moments of being uncomfortable when you feel called by the Holy Spirit to do something. To take up your cross does not mean we should be seeking out pain or death. Cross-bearing is an act of love that we choose to do. I read a wonderful way to associate what it is to be a cross-bearer. I am sure you are all familiar with the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians passage, love is patient, love is kind. Simply replace the word love with cross-bearer. A cross-bearer is patient, a cross-bearer is kind. A cross-bearer does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. A cross-bearer finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Do you possess some or all of these characteristics? I know I certainly do not. I challenge you to pick one to work on and go from there. Personally, I'm still on the first one, patience. My dad, who is here tonight, I'm sure can attest that it is still a work in progress. We need to be willing to carry our own cross, one day at a time, to do his will, even when the work is difficult even when we are humiliated or treated unfairly, even when our pride is hurt. Remember that the cross we bear is not above our ability, and God is there to help. Like Jesus needed a hand carrying his cross, we also can turn and ask for help. We can look for a helping hand, advice, and encouragement from friends, family, clergy, and especially through prayer. Finally, we are asked to follow Jesus. Are there times you feel pulled in a direction of service, but make up reasons why you'll do it another time? I know I have. I challenge all of us to say yes. Yes, the next time I'm called to lend a hand. Yes, the next time someone looks like they need a kind smile and a listening ear. Yes, to the next time I'm asked to do something I normally would say no to. St. George is not only the name of our church, but you can find churches everywhere named after this saint. Along with many other countries, he is the patron saint of England. His red cross on a white background forms their national flag. Who better to represent our community of faith than the man who slayed a dragon? The man who denied himself a good job and freedom bore the cross of standing up for the injustice being carried out towards Christians, and regardless of extreme torture, stayed true to himself and his beliefs up until his last breath. Next time you're in the side chapel in our church, look up and see St. George above the door to the left. Remember him and the strength that he represents and hopefully encourages in you. Remember, he was just an ordinary person like you and I who decided to do something extraordinary with his life. I hope you feel a little extra proud the next time you say the name of our church, St. George's, and I hope you feel encouraged to hoist up your cross with love in your heart and follow Jesus. I would like to conclude this evening with a prayer to St. George. 
Almighty God, who gave to your servant, George, boldness to confess the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, before the rulers of this world, and courage to die for this faith. Grant that we may always be ready to give a reason for the hope that is in us, and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the world signs of your precious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. They have no speech, they use no words, no sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. So let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. When all was formless, empty, and dark, you said, let there be light, and there was light. Magi saw your light coming into the world and followed it to Bethlehem. They saw the child with his mother Mary and bowed down and worshipped him.
Years later on the night, he freely gave himself to death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, open our hearts to your great love. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may have hearts full of love, eyes to see you in all things, and ears to hear the poor and brokenhearted. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now, gathering all of our prayers together, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our Come to the table. Feast on God's abundant life for you. This is the table at which God is host and all are welcome guests. These are the gifts of God for the whole people of God.
heart sick and sore, Jesus, Son of God, will save you, full of pity, love, and power. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. Come, you thirsty, come and welcome God's free bounty, glorify true belief and true repentance. Every grace that brings you nigh, I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of my dear Savior. Oh, there are ten thousand charms. Come, you Just a couple of quick reminders. Uh, this Saturday evening at 7 p.m. at Market Square downtown, um, we are having a joint Candlemas service. And so uh, participation from all of the local Anglican parishes uh, is being encouraged, and all of the clergy will be there, and hopefully as many people as are able to come out will also be there. It will be inside, so it will be warm. And uh, there will be candles and... Um, and number of most of the Carabio Corral is going to be there and, and the children's choir as yeah. well yeah. and, and Mari and uh, some members from the George Express, uh, George Express Youth Choir will also be there uh, so uh, leading us in music uh, on, on the Saturday evening so if you're able to make it out I would definitely encourage you please come and uh, support Candlemas and if you've never had the opportunity to go to a Candlemas service it's a, a great um, it's a great service. It's a, a celebration of light, blessing of candles, blessing of the light for the year. Um, obviously, had perhaps a lot more specific meaning when we entirely relied on candles to light the church, um, but uh, it's it's still got a lot of uh, a lot of weight to it. So, and then um, we have the coldest night of the year coming up later in February. Anybody interested in supporting or being a part of, please speak to Lindsay. And I'll take this opportunity to say thank you very much for your uh, words in your sermon tonight, Lindsay. Uh, and if you'd like to carry on the conversation, then please join us afterwards for the Bible study. And next week we will have infinitely more back with us. And Gerald and Allison were just in Edmonton. They just won two awards uh, for their music. And as Martha had said before they were heading off on their tour, uh, a bunch of the music for which uh, they were nominated for the awards was born out of this community and this service and, and uh, music that they created for Advent Cafe. So we can celebrate with them. And next week they'll be here and we're, uh, we're going to have, I'm told, uh, cake, which I know will be surprising for everybody. <laughs> Shocking for St. George's to have some cake. So uh, please come out next week. It should be a lot warmer, and uh, we, can <laughs> we can celebrate with Gerald and Allison. And I think that's it for announcements, so I will turn it back over to uh, Crabio Corral, and a huge thank you to Crabio Corral for leading us in our music tonight. And should we and encourage everybody? I'm inviting those of you who have your instruments here. Oh. Look at our triangle. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Please join in. Please.
please stand up. <laughs> Thank you. was Jesus' parting gift to his friends and disciples, and so we greet each other in that same peace this evening. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of Christ be always with you. And please share a sign of that peace with each other. <laughs> 